This is a hard drive from a PlayStation 4, and little did I know, over the next five hours, I would be trying again and again to install both Windows and then Mac OS on this thing. This whole process started with me testing out the drive and disk utility on my 2012 iMac, and then trying to format it. I started with Mac OS Extended as default, as I wanted to see if the drive would work. It actually did format successfully. The original plan was to get Windows 10 on this, so I tried my first strategy, which was to simply restore the Windows 10 installation from my iMac onto the hard drive. This is quite an easy thing to do in disk utility on Mac OS. After the restore finished, I took the trusty 2006 Vista MacBook apart and swapped out the hard drive. Now don't worry, this isn't the new fate for the MacBook. I'll be putting the original drive back in it later, as I still want to use the XP install on it for a few more videos. The new drive went in no problem, but unfortunately I got absolutely nothing from the hard drive, just a flashing folder. I wasn't 100% expecting this to work. I wanted to know if the hard drive was being detected at all. The iMac picked it up fine, but that was over USB. I used the macOS Leopard install disk to get into disk utility. Fortunately, the Mac was picking it up. I then tried making a Windows 10 install USB from my PC. I've had luck installing Windows over USB before on a MacBook of a similar age, but I wasn't 100% sure on this because of the weird EFI support. Once the USB was ready, I plugged it into the MacBook. Sadly, absolutely nothing happened when I did this, so I'll put it down to the weird EFI support. It just showed a blank white screen, which was a bit disappointing. Nonetheless, I carried on trying. My next idea was to burn a 32-bit Windows 10 DVD. The only Mac I have on hand that's actually capable of this is my 2011 iMac. So I temporarily replaced my 2012 one with it and burned the DVD. After it had burned successfully, I put it into the MacBook and really, really hoped something would come up. Guess what? Nothing happened. I'm starting to think there's an issue with the DVD drive, as at another point it wouldn't even read my macOS Snow Leopard DVD. Time for the next idea, the 2007 Mac Mini. I was curious to see if this would detect the DVD, being a year newer. I ended up moving pretty much everything around on my desk to get this working, as everything was essentially hardwired into my PC for cable management. I eventually got everything ready, turned on the Mac Mini and inserted the DVD, it actually did detect it, reinforcing my theory that there's a problem with the MacBook's DVD drive. Annoyingly though, it got stuck on this select screen and would not go any further. It also didn't accept any keyboard input. It's time to try something else using the 2011 iMac. I plugged in the PS4 hard drive via USB and had the idea to use the Windows 7 install disk to install it on the drive externally. It did detect it and started loading the setup process. Rather irritatingly, this still flat out refused to work, and got stuck on a blinking cursor. I don't know what's going on, but I'm sure this MacBook is cursed. Next, I tried a Windows 7 DVD instead. This would involve doing exactly the same thing, but upgrading the drive to Windows 10 later. This DVD did work. It's the same one as I used in my video installing Windows on the 2011 iMac. Windows 7, however, did not like the format of the hard drive, so... Then I realised it wasn't formatted as NTFS, but FAT32 instead, so Windows wouldn't install. To remedy this, I plugged the drive into my PC, went into the hard disk partitions utility, and reformatted it as NTFS with the correct partition scheme. I then double checked that everything was okay before returning it to the iMac. When refreshing the device list, it came straight back up, but you guessed it, there was another problem. It said it couldn't be installed. When checking why, it turns out you can't install Windows 7 from a DVD to an external disk. I wish I'd known this way earlier, as it would have saved a lot of time. At this point, in a similar way to the original Vista video, I gave up on Windows 10. So instead, I wanted to get OS X Tiger installed, as it was the original version of macOS that shipped with the MacBook. As I don't have an Intel DVD for Tiger, I had to use my iBook G4 to clone its own hard drive to the MacBooks. This has worked before and has been my go-to way of installing Tiger quickly on older Apple stuff. I did this using the restore function on my Leopard DVD. The files didn't take too long to copy. 
I achieve this by putting the MacBook into target disk mode, which makes its hard drive visible to other Macs over a Firewire cable. This whole process only took about 10 minutes, which, given the age of the technology, is not bad at all. Certainly a lot faster than installing Tiger via a disk. At this point, I unplugged the MacBook and restarted it, confident that it would boot into Tiger no problem. This never happened. Why is it that this MacBook, when I try something, will do the opposite? I faffed around with it for a few minutes, but it wouldn't even detect that there was an OS there. Now, you might be thinking that it's because I copied a PowerPC installation to an Intel machine, but I've done it before with a lot of success, so there was no reason for it not to work this time. For whatever reason, I then shoved in a Windows 2000 disk. I think I was just too frustrated to think straight at this point. Someone on the Discord server said they'd got it working on theirs and all the drivers worked okay. In my case, however, being on this MacBook, it of course didn't work and got stuck on the setup is inspecting your hardware screen. At this point, I just wanted an operating system on this hard drive to see if it was possible. I chose the macOS Leopard DVD as it had been the only thing that hadn't let me down during this project. I customised the install and, hey, look at that. It started installing perfectly and I'm pleased to say that it eventually did get through the installation with no issues. It also did it quite quickly too, taking no longer than 20 minutes off the DVD. Now that I had an OS installed, I took a minute to breathe, as this had been a nearly 5 hour process. Burning DVDs and creating Windows 10 USBs are things that both take a while, and use up tremendous amounts of time. Regardless, something was working at last. This hard drive is actually going to be going into the Mac Mini for a future video. Pretty soon, I'll be doing some cool stuff on this MacBook, so consider subscribing for the future content.